Yeah. Gun Trek Rules. This is Jeremy Roberts out. I was doing a diagnosis murder. That was the Dick Van Dyke one. And he, like all the big stars, he just, he said, what's the problem? And, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just... I just like da 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 da. You know, come on! I grew up with you. A red alert. Jeremy, thanks for being with us tonight. Um, I want to introduce you to the people of Beyond Trek Podcast. Uh, you've been you've been talking to Big J. I'm over here, other way. Like it always, I don't know. I'll fix it later. (laughs) I never understood this. I've done hundreds of things, but it never understood the whole camera thing. Right. I'm going to be a director someday, but you got to understand though the the camera looks at in it. I'm pointing, I'm pointing toward you now, and you're you're like, what the hell's that? Yeah. You're you're pointing to my my. I'm pointing to to to, uh, yeah. Well, Jeremy, I don't don't think you knew you were going to be joining the uh, the Beard Club tonight. Beards and goatees, half price. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, um, didn't mean to interrupt. Nag, you're introducing us and all that. Big J, Renzo, who just joined us, Hello. Uh, and I'm Dag. Um, yeah, so that's easy and quick. Well, and let's I tell have- everyone who we're talking to today: Jeremy Roberts, Dimitri Valtain from Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country, and the Voyager Pretty in flashback. Voyager episode and flashback and everything Mesocon. else in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. What was the that? Jem Hadar. Like I was psyched when I was like, wow, you're credited as Jerry, but that's you. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's how I connected it. to that too. I got a oh. story for everything. I love yeah, I was born Jerry. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Okay. And I never really oh, I loved Jerry Lewis and I was so connected to that comedy mm-hmm. and I I, I was a, I was doing Hamlet in Denver quickly. I, the marquee had said, uh, you know, Hamlet, Jerry Roberts, and I just kept thinking, you know, they're gonna, you know, people are gonna be watching, and I'm gonna get off some sort of I to be or not to be. <laughs> I just said I got to change that, and I didn't want to come up with something strange with all kinds of consonants, and it wasn't mine. So I thought of Jeremy Irons, and I went Jeremy. Yeah, I, I like hearing the stories of the name changes that actors <laughs> had to do and what they came up with is, is pretty interesting, but I've been following you on Facebook, of course. And I didn't realize that the nineties was pretty much dominated by Jeremy Roberts. I, there's movies coming up shows that I didn't realize you were in. It's, you were all over the place. It, it, you, it might seem like a little bit, but I mean, there was the adventures of Briscoe County jr. Uh, so I'll oh. from that. Um, why isn't that airing somewhere? I don't understand why that. That was a great show. Oh, yeah. I mean, you were on The Mask, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. You were in The Mask? Yeah. Well, I'll oh, be, yeah. See, I'll be damned. Oh, I remember. Yes, yes. Well, uh, weren't you one of the guys that was the um, auto mechanics uh, <laughs> guys? You know, I could be I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen yeah. The Mask, but yeah. That's okay, wow. because because my, I've done like hundreds of things, but they're hundreds. One, you know, and, and they're all. I, I'm not ashamed of anything, but they're just not, I'm not the star of everything. Right. It's fine. I never wanted to be, which I got exactly what I wanted, you know, you know, from my, when I started acting, I didn't want to be anything other than a character actor. And it didn't, I didn't specify, you know, the most famous. So. Right. I mean, you've also been in Malcolm in the Middle. You've been in Dragnet. You've been on a ton of very well-known shows. I'm so. telling you. I got to put my finger Jason Alexander's nose. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. He was okay, but I had done a Seinfeld earlier. I'm, I'm actually the guy you don't see except for my eyeglasses in Seinfeld. I'm in a limo episode where I'm driving these racists. Supposedly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I remember they only hear one. everything yep. I say is, is in the, uh, what do they call it? The rear view mirror. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, oh, you that's know how right. I know you were in everything. Because you were in an episode of Bakersfield PD. That's how I know you were in everything. <laughs> Bakersfield PD, yeah. Oh. I'm from Bakersfield, so it just warms oh, my heart. Of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a funny show. Funny show. So yeah. you were, first you were thing, going... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. The first thing I ever did was uh, I robbed uh, John Ritter. Got to know him. A great, mm. funny, funny guy. 
and I got to rob him in my first outing as an actor. Nervous as hell, but <laughs> everybody, everybody ever worked with him always been amazing to be like, relax, it's okay, I'm nobody, it's nothing. You know, but when you're sitting there doing a scene with Dick Van Dyke or somebody, you kind of freak out. Oh, I can only imagine. Uh, do you do you have a story about like getting the jitters on the set because of like that person is on the same set as me? Oh my gosh! Right? Yeah. Or that director, uh, or that, or, or getting real close to this guy. It's my background image here, George Takai. Just all all that. Yeah, we want to hear some jitter stories. Some just <laughs> you're nervous as hell, kind of. I can't do this kind of story. No, I was basically perfect. Most of the stuff I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay you, you, no you no I'm a, I was i'm a huge nerd as it is i'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a, i was a big nerd of my way i watched the first episode and and everyone after that in 1966 and nice of star trek I, I, you know i i and i i really i thought well if i'm ever going to get on anything and i act you know and i i actually got on that one Hooperman, I went in and I got the picture. I said, well, I may not work again because I knew the odds, you know, 95% mm -hmm. never work again. <laughs> so I got an eight by 10 of him and three's company or something. I took it on the set. He signed it and everything was beautiful. And I ended up having hundreds now. I mean, knock wood. Right. You know, it worked out, but uh, it never changed the fact that everybody, I got to be with a lot of big ones, you know, for, I, I, no reason. I am lucky. I don't know the business, uh, and and they all happen to be huge. And and the people in them were people that can would make you really nervous because of who they were. Oh yeah, you know, I did a what was it? It was a Murder She Wrote, Angel Lansbury. Oh my god. Oh Murder She Wrote. Yeah, I did that. That was a story. That's another one. But I was doing a diagnosis murder. That was the Dick Van Dyke one. Oh right. Mm -hmm. And he I had a scene with him and Piper Laurie. Piper Laurie is this uh, actress in The Hustler with Paul Newman. And, and I'm like, I, I just I, I just kept fumbling and being, it was almost if there was a comedy of it, I would just be sweating. <laughs> and, 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 and he, like all the big stars, he just, he said, what's the problem? And, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just like, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Like, you know, come on! I grew up with you. You're just—I'm having a—I'm a, a, supposed to act normal, and I'm supposed to be up to where you are. That was a big thing that freaked you out all the time. Is yeah, but will I be able to be where they are at that level when you speak, and or will it look like I'm just a high school student or something? Right. <laughs> but you know, he calmed me down. You know, we had lunch, and then I, okay. I'm having what well, it, it it traveled over into like my regular life later on in life my wife she she's uh, her mother is haji there's a she's on that poster back there okay she's yeah big film uh big film uh, fasty person faster pussy cat kill kill mm -hmm. and she ended up dating my, my childhood idol which is frank gorshin yeah i saw rich. that and and you know the next thing you know after after so and so i'm in he's in my backyard having bourbon with this man i grew up with and and He's the, he was the impressionist. That was why I liked him. It wasn't the Riddler and that. Yeah. But uh, here he is, this guy that I, I'm looking across. Uh, so I, it wasn't a camera on us, but man, you couldn't be any more nervous all the time. But he, yeah. of course, made you the, feel the Riddler, The Riddler on the uh, Batman 60s show and Battle. one of the aliens in uh, TOS episode, Let This Be Your Last Battlefield. Let This Be Your Last Battlefield. Yeah, yeah. yeah he gave yeah. me a little pin he gave me. Oh, I have it back here. So, oh, that's cool. And I see a, a Batman picture there on your wall. Is that is that Adam, Adam West, West Batman? Oh, the, yeah. There's the there's a picture of the character. Uh, yeah, there Frank Gorshin played. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's not Batman. Looks like Batgirl. I I didn't see the. Oh, well, that's Batgirl up there. I met yeah. her. That's another story. <laughs> Let's hear this I had one. Crushed on her, and oh. I ended up at a, at a signing one time. And she was there. And she, oh. she heard out that I had a crush on her when I was a kid. And, and she just came over and, and laid a kiss on me that I thought, you know, something's going to happen from this. Just kidding. <laughs> just, that was a, Honey, I could have been with that girl. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, look oh, at that. That's you really cool. that. Yeah, you got it right there. Oh, I, I love that. So anyway, that's great. That's that whole nerves thing, you know, and then yeah. just just. 
many other times. Oh, well, the, the, uh, you, do you, did you mention Murder, She Wrote, for any reason? Had you heard me uh, mention I'm it? just a huge fan of Angela Lansbury, so when I was doing my research on you, I just noticed that you had been in an episode with her, so any stories yeah. about that would be amazing. Oh, with her? Oh, that was another thing, is Angela Lansbury, this is a huge uh, Broadway star, too. I mean, I had I, and all these people, and I did an episode where, gosh, I'm not going to be very good at mem- giving you the names, but there were six or seven other big stars in this episode. And maybe you remember them on there. Bat Masterson was, the, he played Bat Masterson, maybe Gene Barry, Barry. There were others. And there was this climactic scene where I have to talk about a videotape. And here I'm trying to help with the murder. Mm-hmm. And it was at the end of the night. And there's Angela Lansbury. She has something that I have to say to her. And then there's the next star and the next star and the next. And I have to have these scenes with each of these big, like, my goodness, it was just bizarre that I had to talk to them. But the thing is, they shot over my shoulder onto every one of their reactions. And then because it was late, they let each of them go. And somebody would come on like an extra or the continuity girl or a makeup person. And they'd read from a script her lines so that when they turned the camera around and, and gave me mine, I could give the reaction. But I was giving it to makeup girls and the stunt man and you know all the big stars were gone so the nerves were gone so it, it probably worked out good but they probably got a, a, a shivering guy behind the camera giving the, the lines back to them because i'm oh it's my turn soon and I'll, <laughs> i won't be able to and then they all started going away and i went oh hey, you're oh, leaving so bad i can read with these <laughs> there, there was very clever though yeah it, it well is. they had to get them out because it was like 10 at night and and they were who they were and i understood <laughs> there, there was something that you brought up earlier that i wanted to talk about was that you decided you wanted to be a character actor now my my best friend who's an actor out there uh, la based actor in hollywood's name's ben keens we've talked about this also was that there seems to be kind of two goals in, in acting either you're going to be the big name star like Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, uh, Julia Roberts, whoever it may be, or you're going to be that guy that's in everything. Don't know your name, but know your face. Uh, like the guy that's in Die Hard, um, Big Trouble in Little China, long haired, you know, the, the Asian guy, the, the Robert, uh, Tr- um, how do you pronounce the last name? Trujillo, Tr- you know, it's got that very familiar face. You don't, might not know his name, can't even pronounce it half the time. So it was, it was one of those, like you're either going to be the star or you're going to be the guy that you're in everything. Everyone sees your face, knows it, but maybe doesn't know your name. Like, Oh, it's that guy. So was that kind of what you decided on? You wanted to be the, Oh, that guy I've seen in everything, but don't know his name. Uh, Kind of mine was more on that. They were, they looked like they'd be more fun to play a uh, war bond opposite John Wayne. And it wouldn't have to carry the film. I know it's cowardly or a uh, 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 guy that got the Lon Chaney's, the uh, Lou, uh, you know, the horror film uh, stars. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and so it just seemed that would be the easier route. And it, then it didn't sort of, it just sort of told me the minute I got to Hollywood, because when I did Shakespeare in, in, in uh, stage mm-hmm. you just did what you, you became somebody else blah 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 but uh and came to hollywood my agent got right away i was with the best uh guest star agent in hollywood at the time and i don't say that only because they told me <clears throat> well it had to be because you were guest star in everything this guy did his yeah. job i think within the first week or so i, I had the first job and i had like a a good percentage of 50 60 percent booking and it's wow. a good thing because you don't never know what you never know what you're going to get but, uh where are we at something to do with well i, I think so i think it it seemed like you had Character. that niche going in being the the guy oh, in the, the first job i got yeah i got i got to be a bad guy oh okay that Robert. was the point i'm sorry to make gee where i go i, I got to be <laughs> where a bad am i landing guy, the and point? that just sort of meant oh look where he's oh he's booking another one oh another bad guy and i just they never saw beyond that and i i guess i had no problem with that because I, I i didn't have time to 
to complain or say, you know, why don't you see me as a star? Right? <laughs> I didn't think of it that way. I have a sensitive side. I'm also funny. And I got a job, so shut up. Right. <laughs> I was happy. Well, yeah, ha- happy to be working. So that that is great. If you're going, if you're going to do it, that's how you do it. Now, no, wait a minute. Excuse me, but then there's people that you, you mentioned that, like Danny Trejo. Oh, that's or, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Richard Reilly, he's been in over 350 guest stars. I mean, he's he's prolific. He's a, a friend of mine, and we did a we did a series in the summer uh, called Lone Justice. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he's 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 Richard he's Reilly. Quite, so what what's what's he been in that yeah, maybe? <clears throat> I couldn't tell you. He's been a Santa Claus and everything. Richard <laughs> Reilly. Richard Reilly was Bataille in The Inner Light no oh yes. yeah and he was yeah. also one of the holographic characters on voyager he, yeah he, you're right he had to be in a star trek i, I didn't even look I, it up because he's I'm in erotic i know all the actors and actresses <laughs> <laughs> well see and that's the thing is it's he's, he's got probably that face. most recognizable in that in the episodes of Enterprise with the Augments, where he's Jeremy Lucas. He's the doctor who like tries to tell people that they're crazy. He gets, Super recognizable. He gets stuck in a tube and he dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had invited him over one Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving. And uh, unfortunately, I had to cancel it and it didn't get to him. So he arrives at the gate pushing the button. And, and <laughs> so we, we and my wife and he had Thanksgiving together. <laughs> Because I couldn't see it was canceled. Right? Sorry, Richard. Right, he's already there. Get out. Oh, that's you know? great. Did he at least bring a side dish? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, Tell actually, us the side dish story. Image. I still have that image of walking down to the gate and and seeing him holding this tin foil. <laughs> tin foil. I don't know what it was. I don't know. And, so, and uh, there's, there's a there's a side dish story that. <laughs> Uh, that I want to talk about. I, if I'm saying it right, it had to do with uh, was it Thanksgiving at Kevin Sorbo's, where everyone brought a, a like kind of a little snack oh. side dish, and there was not a main meal that was ordered. So it's like, oh, this yeah. is yeah, that was odd, and I, I I I actually never really said much about that ever because Kevin, you know, he's a swell, wonderful guy, but he didn't cook. That day? No, he didn't he, order he, pizza. Nothing. His wife, I think, is the same now. Uh, I, I can't remember her name, but we haven't. I haven't seen him and talked since the uh, Hercules. But yeah, it was odd it, because yeah, because there were other people there. But I, I, I didn't want to think that you know. Oh, he just thought, well, everybody else will bring something. I don't. Have <laughs> That's bad party planning, right there. He didn't have a you know. I'm Hercules, so of course. Right, right. Kind of. He wasn't that way. <laughs> I don't have to bring the ham someone else will. I'll just eat it. Well, those, you know, dinner by tapas, right? Like you're not adding big meals. It's just little bits from everything. Well, sure. That's, that's good if you're prepared for that, but it that's sounded fair. like a bunch of people brought potato salads and coleslaw mm-hmm. and, you know, stuff you can get at Kroger on the way there. And here's your tub of macaroni and cheese. So you're you eating all these. Macaroni and like, cheese, Jay? No, I love macaroni and cheese. Just why you got to say it like that, Jay. As a side item. What, what are you saying about mac and cheese? <laughs> that is good wholesome American food there, Big Jay. It, it, it is, but I like it as a side. Like, you, you, I've got to have the main, the steak or the lamb <laughs> chop or pork roast or chicken, whatever it is. If you're telling me my meal is just macaroni and cheese, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I'm... I'm eating a side. I, I want an actual. I mean, I hate to detour here, but like, you know, you can dope up your macaroni and cheese, right? You don't have to eat it right out of the box. Short ribs. Right. Oh, short or ribs lobster. and grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh. Short ribs and grilled cheese. You can do like uh, macaroni and cheese with pulled pork on top or mm-hmm. beef brisket on top. Yes. It can what be your these? main. You can mm-hmm. add bread stuff. Like I don't even use milk in my macaroni and cheese. I dope it up with sour cream and a ton of extra shredded cream cheese because it's delicious can you teach me these ways <laughs> yes Easily. the cooking I, food can't order from a jedi I, though I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cooking skills you learn from a jedi jeremy i've got a question for you though because you mentioned um uh robert really particularly right you guys both did voice acting richard. for the same video or richard you're right sorry you both did voice acting for the same video game 
Uh, you both did voice acting for Wing Commander 4. Was this the kind of voice acting gig where you actually met up with the other voice actors in like the same location? Or did you not even know that he was a voice actor on the same game? No, you didn't get to see unless they were in the scene or something. And, and even then, it may not have been. Uh, I think I only got to meet uh, Mark Hamill, mm -hmm. who ended up giving my, my daughter a little stuffed animal. And anyway, that was another uh, in New Zealand story. But... Mark is such a great actor. Oh, I played that game. Video games, too. Yeah, it was a great game. Oh, man, that was way back. I haven't played a video game ever because I can't. I try. Man. I, really? You know, I can't get in the first door on certain certain stuff. I just said, that's it. <laughs> Xbox just blows. I mean, I, you know, I'm saying I, I've shot guns and all that. So I there goes the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> but I just couldn't do it. I, maybe I should try. I should get another, get one and give it a shot. You know, for old age, you know, you don't want to lose your Hey, motor yeah. skills and everything. No, <laughs> if you if you get a cool game system, I'll give you a friend code. We can play like Mario Kart or something. Wing yeah, there's or six. Yeah, they just, to six and Wing there's something for everyone. He just yeah. was making noise, Mark. What was he saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. I assume that would we would hook up in the magic land of like wires. Yeah. 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 A series of tubes. <laughs> Vacuum tubes. Mail. The only tubes I know are the. Do you ever anybody ever heard of the tubes? The band. The tubes? No, the, uh, the man. Uh. -uh. Oh man, I'm old. It's just, it's, uh, it was a it was a huge New Year's Eve like San Francisco kind of wild. Uh, yeah, I wish I could come up with this. There's a, they had two hits. All right, this is useless knowledge. You know, White I, punks on dope, and she's a beauty. Uh, no. The what do you want from on life? Oh, that was Motley Crue. A baby's arm holding an apple. Doesn't ring. None of that. that no. Stuff. Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah. All right, that was before us. us. Well, I got 40 years on you anyway. So <laughs> and we and, and down here at Renzo, it looks like we got like a young Pavarotti. Has anybody ever said that? No, I've never gotten that one, but I'm flattered. Thank you. Huh. You, you okay. look just like a young, you could play him as a youth. Well, you know, 20s, whatever. And now I can't unsee it. Now, now, now you see Pav give us a song. Bonifa. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't <laughs> sing. <laughs> oh, I am musically musically tone deaf. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, me uh, too. The last thing you want to hear is me singing. Trust it, me. On it that takes one. quite a bit of alcohol to get me to do karaoke, much less sing like an aria at a at something recorded. Oh man! People well, that's because I'm going to go mad. We, we all become the best singers after drinking a little bit, right? Like, yeah, like it's suddenly the we're all. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeremy, Jim, I want to bring Jim you back Carrey, in too. a good, good singer. He knows opera. Oh, I bet he is. Who's a good singer? Changed, uh, uh, Jim uh, that Donne fa mobile. That I forget is something from a Italian Tuvac, opera. You yeah, that, are a man. That's the one. <laughs> he sang it coming down the stairs in some downtown hotel we were shooting on, and I was at the bottom, and I just sort of picked up right after he did. He he saw it and he started down the down the thing like he would, and we we exchanged. Oh. Arias he's, and I just imagine was, he's got to be such became a friend. A, yeah. He's got to be such a um, character, a brilliant oh. arc on set. You can't like like Robin Williams was, and you, you just can't. You you just sit and watch. Just how does it come out of you? Oh yeah, how are very you very talented? Be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring it back to the tubes because they actually did something I really like in the 1980 film Xanadu. There's you also saw Xanadu? There's I thought I was the only one. <laughs> Dude, I have the Blu-ray for Xanadu. No, but you know what's um, crazy? I listened to the soundtrack for Xanadu on YouTube like today while I was working. That's spooky. No, that's actually really cool because track four, Dancing, is the mm -hmm. one where they do that 40s Asian, their 40s, 80s fusion. Yes. Where you have like yes. the neon pop group and then like the 40s dancing sort of like jazzy. Mm-hmm. And so the band, the tubes filled in as the, you know, rock portion, the neon rock portion mm. of the eighties band oh. for that song in that scene. And it's one of my favorite songs ever. It's a good mashup song. It, it really is. It's not the Xanadu that we hear wrote Olivia Newton John singing, is it? Yep. It is. That's the one. Yep. The, the tubes, the tubes, a real weird looking band. I mean, uh, yeah, the Tubes, San Francisco-based rock band. They had an album in 1975 with the single "White Punks on Dope." Mm -hmm. What do you want? Yeah, White Punks on. Oh yeah, Mom and Dad in Hollywood. Uh, what do you want from life? Uh, anyway, that's they did no. Yes, but maybe because I only saw Xanadu once when it 
Oh, you well, got to see it again. So my mom was addicted to Xanadu, so I watched Xanadu a lot. It's just roller skating. A lot of roller skating. It is. Right. It is the the paramount Greek myth for our time. <laughs> I think it was a very underappreciated movie. I, I watched it. I liked it. I may even watch it again. But whenever I'm like missing the gag. You're There's all missing with me just to make me bag? watch this. I'm going to go back over there to the TV and turn it on what? to Netflix. And I'm, you're going to make me watch this and you're joking, right? No, watch Paramount it. Greek myth of our age is Hercules for the Disney kids, right? Like that, that I think is more Paramount Greek. Okay, so you're younger than I am because yeah. I stopped watching Disney by then. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> You don't have Disney plus. I do. I have to watch uh, the, the, all the Marvel stuff that's coming out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are you a Marvel fan, Jeremy? Or strictly uh, sci fi and Star Kevin Feggy won't let him talk about it. <laughs> well, I, I, the, I don't the Marvel have movies to are... say because I, I can't connect them. You know, That's they okay. just seem like swashbuckling, huge, big, buck busting sci fi, CGI, amazing. That's all they all seem to me. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, I can't, yeah, you, that's half their shtick. You've distilled it. Like, what's properly. Thor? 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 Oh, he's the God of Thunder. Thor's the yeah, yeah, no, but Norse is Marvel? Myth of our time. Oh, Marvel. Marvel. Yes, he's Marvel. He's a Marvel mm-hmm. franchise. And sci-fi is like uh, me, Star Trek, etc. Yes. Yeah. 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 Action adventure would be like the, the Marvel and, and DC, the, the Batman, Superman. and Where does like, Lord Marvel. of the Rings come in? Fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, fantasy. fantasy. Do you yeah. ever have a... I heard this guy said this was a comic. Do you, you ever have a problem... Uh, uh, between uh, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, and the Bible. <laughs> I mean, only hmm. one of those is particularly. You ever mixed those so. three up? I can't figure out which one is. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. Oh no! Is this a religious show? I I, no, no, not a religious show. But you just reminded me about Game of Thrones. Now, were you a fan of that? Because I didn't understand that show. Like, I didn't know no. what the hell was going on most of the time because there were. Like 12 different storylines happening and it was just i i couldn't i couldn't hold on to that now There's too much sex yes and i'm not a prude at all i mean i like lots of it but I, it was just seemed like just that was all much. they were doing i'll grant you yeah. that it was definitely gratuitous in the earlier seasons but other shows have yes. done that too right like spartacus did the same thing gratuitous left and right totally unnecessary it's to grab but the audience you, yeah exactly it's to widen the audience but i would say that game of thrones uh, the books and the show do try and tell a very detailed, political, like interesting story. You just have to be able to follow six threads at once for the same story and try and like piece it together yeah. from six threads. Yeah. Right. So it is a bit of a challenge. It's not the kind of show that you're going to get the first time. I would think it's something that like watching it more than once you get the real depth out of it. How long do you have to go through? I mean, honestly, I've gotten friends hooked on it after three episodes. Of which show? Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Well, I'm sorry, say that again. I've gotten friends hooked on it after three episodes of Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I watched the entire thing. I just didn't know what was going on most of the time. <laughs> so here's here's Lord of the question. Ring fan. I, had uh, to be a Lord, I had to be a Lord of the Ring fan because when I was a kid, I read all the books. And I just was so sci-fi oriented. Heinlein and you I'm know, not Stranger, lie, Strange Land, all that. I just loved it. Loved I'm, it because I was a nerd. I'm getting I was like married. a nerd that was in all the sports, you know? <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I didn't get any cheerleaders. I didn't get nothing of that extra you get for reading in sports. Right. I, but I was in chess club and I loved uh, sci-fi. Didn't get the cheerleaders? That's like one of the perks. No. I didn't either. I'm just saying. <laughs> but then I ended up famous. And right. I didn't get any anyway. I and here we are today. <laughs> now, with, with so much that you're in, if you're channel surfing or, or whatever it is, if you come across something that, that you are in, do you watch it or do you skip on by? And the reason I ask that is whenever I, I don't listen to our podcasts a lot aside from when I have to edit it because I don't like hearing my own voice. I have a, a hard time with that. I think a lot of people are that way. You just, you know, you don't really like hearing it. Maybe it's just me, but now when it comes to, the movies and the TV shows, is that somewhere for you? Or are you like, ah, no, I don't want to watch myself in this show or yeah, I'm going to watch this because I'm in it. No, I'm, I'm the same way. I couldn't ever, <clears throat> I didn't like my voice as a child. 
machine or whatever. It just, you know, the recording would happen. You'd hear it back and go, oh, ugh. it's just terrible. Right? <laughs> well, I sound like that. But then I, then I, but then I realized that, you know, I'm, if I meet a girl on the phone, I have a better chance of getting a date. And I thought it was probably because of the phone and, you know, and the Darth Vader. Right. Deeper, and it does something and it helped. And then, of course, getting on stage, I couldn't walk through a room with any more than four people in it without having to get out because they're going to talk to me. And I freak oh. too shy, way horribly shy. Really? You know, so How are you so that. shy, but you got into acting? Yeah, well, I, I, I have no clue. I did a favor in a in Monrovia, a, a 30 seat theater, a community theater. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the director, a friend of mine, he she. She lost uh, the guy playing the Indian in the 7-Eleven. I know it's cliche. And she said he, he lost it. He broke a leg. I mean, it's going to be a little, you know, just have to do a few. And it was a, it was a, a remake of like, uh, remember, you don't remember. It was called Laugh-In on TV. I remember Laugh-In. Well, the reruns. Yeah. Reruns. Yeah. So they were just <laughs> doing a remake of that. And I had to, I had to be able to, an Indian in my country, da, 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 blah, blah. And I was scared to death. But I got up and I did uh, the first joke or whatever and the place roared and i i went oh this is what i want to do oh and then i did another one and then i you know i went this is how i'm able to uh talk to people i can be someone else and then it went from there i decided to go to school at valley college and and i got into act and shakespeare and the next thing you know i'm hollywood blah blah but uh yeah, no. So you think it, being uh, someone else is what helped to get out of the it being had shy. To be, it had to be, yeah. And then I could hide behind all the masks I did, whatever, sci-fi or crazy. But I couldn't watch myself do it either. When I was a kid, I couldn't listen to myself. And then when I got on, I had to see the first one. I went, "Oh man, you suck." <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep getting roles? <laughs> exactly. My wife could tell you that's exactly what I've said every day for twenty. 30, 40 years. Is that how are they hiring me? I have no clue. Objectively, I have no clue. I can't, I must be seeing something else. I have to be because they can't be that wrong as I am. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a catch here. What why am I Pure getting all these syndrome. roles? No. What, what 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 is it? Imposter syndrome. That's oh, yes. mm-hmm. as you do a job, you're wondering, like, does everybody else realize that I don't know what I'm doing? Everybody else knows what they're doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. It, oh, oh God, what's gonna happen? I've had nightmares. And even after I stopped, I had, I have, I've had a few in the last 10 years that you don't know your lines. You know, everything's just going off. <laughs> You're naked. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you say it's ridiculous. You're naked so, in a play no, you've never heard of? I can't look at myself, so I do not watch. It, it, I felt this way as a, as a kid. I was a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I'd have to watch from another room, you know. Because if they did watch, they'd, they'd fumble. And I believe this as a kid. <laughs> So I couldn't watch myself. Everybody else on the set seems to be able to sit there with the director and watch themselves over and over and over. And maybe it, it, I should have because it could have got better, maybe. But I, I never really liked it. So there's a lot that I have not seen. And I thought, well, maybe I should collect everything I've been in and just for my daughter, or, you know, posterity. <laughs> so have but you? I can look at it then, maybe. Maybe. So have you not watched the uh, the beginning scenes of? The undiscovered country that you're in, or the episode of Voyager where you reprised your character? No, no, I mean that. What's that you have behind you? Look at that guy. Right. Yeah, that's that. That's you. <laughs> you <laughs> gotta look at that guy. Look at him. He he's got great hair. He looks. He's got some great hair, though. Why didn't he become famous? Look at that face. I know that. That's Dimitri. I cannot confirm the existence of Praxis Valtain. <laughs> Yeah. Now I and I told these guys said I think he was the first <laughs> officer on the Excelsior because you had out of that crew probably the most face time of anyone else on that bridge. So to me that's yeah, that's that's got to be first officer right there. But yeah, that's I pointed to the wrong guy. Yeah, that's Well, they told me that. You're going to have to watch I, it sometime. You did good. They've told me that. Oh, I've seen that enough. It's short and I but then I remember seeing it recently and, and going, my God, he's even bad acting walking. You can't even <laughs> walk over him, you're a bad actor. Uh, so I thought it's not good to do this. So, but now maybe I can look again because, you know, that's not so bad to look at. Well, there. you must have, you, you did well enough. You got called back to reprise a character and uh, yeah. Voyager episode Amazing. flashback. 
you only, you're lucky if you get to get a job in Hollywood. But then on top of that, you get to have one in in the Bible. But yeah, I guess TV and film, it's never going to go away. Like, yeah, like a Christmas movie never goes away. It's right. always going to be there forever. And I not only that, they write another one so you can do it again. And then, oh, I did see this scene and I hadn't seen it in 20 years. Was that one where we're in the bunk together, uh, Tubac mm-hmm. in Voyager. And he says something. I said, I, I say, well, you, you Klingons got to learn to relax or something. <laughs> and I thought, oh, <laughs> he did that right. Oh, OK. All right. He did a good job. <laughs> now, the thing that in typical Star Trek fashion that kind of bothers me about that is oh, no. I'm going to I'm going to get a little little technical here. And the fans, I think, are going to know what I'm talking about at the end of Star Trek six. When Sulu is saying his goodbye uh, to Kirk for the Excelsior departs, you've got all the, everyone's on the bridge, the Excelsior, you're there, standing right there on the bridge. And then Voyager comes up with this episode that takes place during the events of the Undiscovered Country, but your, and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, but your character is depicted as having been killed or you know, died during those events. So now you've, you've got this thing where it takes place during the events of Star Trek six, you're on the bridge. They see on the scene at the end of that movie, but Voyager goes and has your character be, be killed to where, well, but he was standing there later, but now That's they two box memories was faulty. That faulty. Yes. He got brain damage from that. Yeah. I yeah. just think that continuity people just, you know, they, they, Jeremy's over it. there like, dude, what are these guys talking about? <laughs> this is the part of, of Star Trek where, yeah, we, we start getting into the deep dives and for some it folks, the guys glaze over and yeah, but it's, it's what we it did. It was a dream. It was all yeah. a dream. <laughs> was that like in Dynasty, how they fixed it? Like in Dallas, when Dallas. they just Dallas. retconned Dallas. an entire season, had Patrick Duffy show up in the shower. Yeah. yeah. That was hilarious. You know, I used I used to watch uh, Dallas when I was a kid. In fact, one of my first uh, few sentences was um, that JR is a snake. <laughs> I was like four, you know, three or four, something <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, a little kid watching Dallas. Uh, yeah, it became my nickname. Dallas? JR. Oh, Jr. Jr. Right. See, was right there. The, I I can't I can't say much about it because I, I my memory is not saying I remembered it all happening, at mm-hmm. all like there was anything wrong at all. I mean, from if one there perspective, was, I, I really don't believe I would have said anything to anybody at the time. Well, you've got to be perspective. You're a writer. You're you're a character. They might actor, just wipe me out, and you're just doing these roles. <laughs> And I've they had send a, me had there. A, what is it? Spencer Tracy was you just show up on time, know your lines. So yeah. I, I, all I've tried to do in 25 years. Is- I've heard a lot of interviews <coughs> with uh, actors who have been asked the overly technical question about one specific role. And the actor's response is, I was there to get paid. I, I don't really remember that much. And oh. so <clears throat> I have to like approach that perspective and be like, this was five years after you did the undiscovered country those little technical details are in the wind and like i said i'm not it's not an excuse i guess because i didn't see it i mean uh right well but you're I, not uh, you're not in charge of the, the continuity or or realizing hey guys wait a minute you can't kill my character at this point in this show <laughs> because then i'm at the end of the movie that it takes place during and no, again you know, you're you're there to say the lines and, and do the thing Right. And okay, if I was a true nerd. Nerd. memory virus, though, a memory right. virus. Right. So if we're going to question anything, it's going to be the fact that what is his memory worth? Right. Right. So. Well, OK, so <clears throat> this is distracting me a lot. There is no <laughs> there is no change between Dag's microphone and the rest of his face. It's like all just blended in. Am I the only one seeing that? It's like like lean, lean back into it. It's just one. It's just a beard. It yeah. looks like the beard continues into the burr. the beard yeah. continues in the microphone. <laughs> now, so this brings me to this story, and I can't recall, <clears throat> excuse me, where I read it. This was a long while back. It was about um, Walter Koenig, and in Star Trek II. So, you remember the scene where 
he's interacting with Khan and they play it as if yeah. Chekhov was I've met Khan before. Yeah. Had met Khan before, but Chekhov wasn't on the enterprise until season two and space seed was season one. And there's uh, a loophole to it though. So there's an episode that he's in that has a star date that is before the con episode. So it's just not consistent. Oh, this, well, the, is, the, this is minutia. This is real minutia. It, it is. <laughs> well, you know, I love minutia, but <clears throat> anyway, it was said that he knew that they were making a mistake in regards to the, the character and you know, the continuity or whatnot, but <clears throat> he chose not to say anything out of fear that his role would be reduced or scenes would be reduced because, oh, wait a minute. No, we, okay. So he wasn't there. So we've got to cut some lines here in the justice. So he stayed quiet about it and just hundred percent legit would totally validate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd do well, the same too, honestly. Yeah. Well, because yeah. Why would you, you, you talk up and you say something and then what ends up happening? Like you, all right, well, okay, we're going to have to just rewrite the scene and you're gone. You're out of it. So I must have thought that myself because I can't believe I would have, I mean, unless I would have been the complete true nerd. And I mean, that, that's a compliment, a fan, like you wouldn't believe, like you gentlemen know, I like, it's amazing with this stuff you'd be able to know that I, I would be thrown out if I said that, oh, uh, sir, excuse me, <laughs> this just doesn't seem to ring right? true. And I, right. I, as a true, start, well, I can't be saying these lines. Right. I won't be doing this. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't fall into a chasm here or get be blown up with an exploding console <laughs> because technically I survived the whole ordeal. But <clears throat> no, you, you had to. And you your character keep had to, trying not to die on the set. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, your, your character. I'm not went dead out, yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> your character went out the best way that any Star Trek character can. The whole exploding console thing. Yeah. So, Jay. Yeah. Jay. Yeah. It was a red car. Oh. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good one. That was a good one. I'll, I'll give you that so, one. <laughs> Jeremy, I hear you're from Birmingham. Yes. Was that I a was long? Born there uh, 56 years ago. And my mother at the time, when I was two, decided to pick up and get put me in a Greyhound bus at two in the morning. And well, because I had nine uncles and aunts that all wanted to adopt me because I was being born without a father. Oh, so I was one of those B words, you know, and uh, they couldn't have it. So she took off and wasn't going to give me up. I love her. Scandalous. Took me to Hollywood, and that's where I it all happened. Is Birmingham really religious? Well, in 1954, I, you know, it wasn't. A, oh, yeah. You don't have a son out yeah. of wedlock for a child. 1954 was before what? The, the bus sit in Rosa Parks. That was like a year later. Yeah. Hmm. Seems, seems about right. Yeah. Well, things way different then. Oh, uh, and well, I, uh, I had, I had uncles that, that were in the uh, fire and police department. Who were involved at during that time with the riots? Oh wow! And it's it's just uh, horrible stories, you know. When I hear them yeah. younger, but they're all uh, gone now. But this had to have been some. We differ. We differ politically, right? So, uh, I mean, it has affected just last year, four years, is, without getting political or religious, has affected my family huge. I, I bet. Right. Out here. That's well, and, and trying trying to stay under the radar is probably now. Is is that a difficult part? Are you recognized a lot when you go out in public? Or are you oh, able no. to kind of slide under the, the radar? Oh, I don't. I, I haven't had a problem. I'd love to be people come out when I was working a lot. I'd always get the you know everybody would cross my path and turn around and, and like uh, they'd say <laughs> something or I'd look back and they'd. Be looking at me like trying to figure out why or right where did i see this guy did i go to school with you if they were close to the age or and i <laughs> i would say well i did shoot a family of three on knots landing or something whatever i did <laughs> you know, oh, yeah you're the murderer you're the guy that did this or chopped that guy's head off in yeah. practice or something <laughs> and it's always thrilling i love it because 
just shows what people watch. You're that guy <laughs> that beat me in chess loved. club. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like seeing the wheels turning in the uh, what was that's the guy what was he in and just walking by walking by yeah, like i never they never know who, who you are i've never really think of all the people that you've made to lose sleep that night because they're trying to think what have i seen him in that's <laughs> yeah, I power do that. i do that when i watch tv my wife hates it i'm constantly i can't watch a show without knowing everything that goes on if i've met anybody behind if I knew the extra, I get to say it. Or if, it, or if it's somebody's <laughs> daughter that I know has got a job because their father's Clint Eastwood or something, I got to say it. <laughs> so she does not like watching you any know. movies or shows with you. Yeah. I would enjoy watching shows with you. That's my favorite kind of trivia, right? Like if you have good <laughs> behind the scenes info about a show, give it to me. It's great. Yeah, you know sure. what? I'm willing to. Pay. I think that too, but that she got a little tired of it after a while. I'm going to ask you guys this. And your your over under is two. We're gonna take some bets here. How many degrees of separation would you say that Jeremy Roberts has with Kevin Bacon? Three. Mm, that's that's bold. I'm gonna say five. I'm gonna go with one. One. Yep. That's all right. That's that's hell of bold. Uh, and Jeremy, if you just say we're talking about um, so. There's kind of this this game, this thing out there uh, sure. with Kevin Bacon because he's been in so many things that going from Kevin Bacon to like through six people, you can connect him to basically everyone in Hollywood. Okay, I two dag. There's two. There are two degrees two. separation between Jeremy Roberts and Kevin Bacon. Let's yep. yeah. It's uh well, well so what Jeremy, would, what, Jeremy. What five degrees would mean I've got to go through five people to get to him. No, you've got to go through you plus four. Four. Right. Right. So, but if I met him, then how many do you get? That's zero. Zero. Yeah. Right. But yeah. according And then according, if, if I didn't have met him, if I hadn't met him, I, I, I would be one because there's, I could name. If, if you met now, someone who has worked with him, him, that'd be one. Right. Pardon me? No, that would be. So by the website, that's two. Yeah. But yeah, so the person is Marsha Gay Harden, who was with you in Late for Dinner and with him in Mystic River. Oh, wow. See, and I was going with Matt Dillon in Herbie Fully Loaded and then mm -hmm. Matt Dillon to Kevin Bacon in Wild Things. Oh. Gee, so you, you hit the two degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon twice. Uh -huh. Two different occasions. Why is that two? What's one then? Well, so it's movie. It's from Jerry. If, if you, you did a movie with him. You, well, if you did a movie with him, then that's no no separation that's one degree that's you two you are in the same place There's that's one degree between you marcia gay harden or the one dag found that would two. be two degrees two degrees yeah. so there's no such thing as, as there's not a zero you've got to have you have to be kevin bacon for it to be zero. right yeah you had you're you are kevin bacon so one that's degree true. would be you've you directly may. worked with him okay in, in a i didn't work show. with him though but uh, right right time. but when you when you work with someone that then went on and worked with him that would be two yes degree yeah two yeah, degrees there's another of separation. one there's also justin long so you have three ways to get what? to kevin bacon my in god two degrees what was just cool. give yeah. me the justin long one herbie uh, fully reloaded uh with jeremy roberts and then in beyond all boundaries with kevin bacon wow see <clears throat> now you know that you've been in everything when you can do <laughs> that because <laughs> uh, unbelievable three times two degrees separation from, Ke from kevin bacon that's jeremy roberts he's been in <laughs> you, you might as well just meet the guy and like go have dinner or something and just say hey i practically know you and he's gonna be like who the hell is this guy <laughs> so i actually guys i've got another one and it's uh -huh. not on the list oh jeremy roberts was in star trek six with kevin bacon or with christian slater yep who was in murder in the first with kevin bacon Oh man, oh, geez. outside the robot scheme. Th this is a record. This, this is all just be... to be low key, like Kevin Bacon. If you happen to be listening, just come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll all I be never one degree met away. Him. I don't know him. <laughs> My wife and I, we do that a lot because she has a, a past as a, as a youth. She has stories. I keep trying to make her write a book, uh, Hollywood, whatever it's called. But she's she's had piano lessons with Cat Stevens kind of stuff, you know grew up knowing Herbie Hancock and go to dinners with him. And, and so she's got that one degree separation thing with a lot of people, but just yeah. from meeting 
and I have the other from having worked and da da da. And I, I go to like uh, like, I, I go to people like Angela Lansbury or mm -hmm. Dick Van Dyke's and see who they worked with, so yeah. that I can get one degree or two from the everyone. It's, everyone. it's, a, fun, it's a fun game <laughs> to play. Like pick anyone: Tom Cruise, Tom <laughs> Hanks. Uh, yeah, who who else? Who else is a real popular? Uh, I don't know. Dwayne Johnson. Pick any actor, and then you start going through. Okay, who who have I worked with? That's worked with. That's worked with. That gets to there. It, it's a fun game to play. I like. I, I forget. The I forget things like. Uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, he did a. I remember his real name is Kurtwood Smith. He was in. Oh, show, absolutely, like, yeah. And he's the he's the guy in Star Trek Six with the white hair and the Fu Man show shoe. Yeah. Yep. A friend of mine, we did a Billy Bud in, in a theater in PCPA in Santa Maria, Solvang, in California. We did Billy Bud. He played the bad guy. He became friends there. And next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, he's the biggest thing ever. And there's people like him and Leon Russom, who plays also like a president of the Federation in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He also, we did a, a two shows like Hunter together. And you find out, man, I, there's like a ton of these people that I've either auditioned with taken roles from or they got mine or, you know we had a thing with bad guys if we ended up running into like three or four at a guest uh, producers meeting where you knew the other three three or four bad guys reading for this and it's like mm -hmm. who got the last one i think you got that i think you, you owe it to fail in there to give it to the rest of us you know <laughs> i also kind of think that all these people that i've touched have become hugely famous and i just kind of wonder if i'm I've got some sort of ghost like actor whisperer thing going. It's yes. the Midas so, touch. Like I it, believe it. Go on my child. I don't get there. I don't get there, but everyone else gets to if you just hang around me. That explains right. why Hollywood's gone down since 2009. Yes. Yeah, yeah, last that... role, and now you're not touching anybody anymore. Oh, and it, yeah, right. The, the quality's yeah. just gone down. And... It's gone. The rise so of the MCU, and Jeremy remakes. Roberts retires. <laughs> Now, well, Kurt, a lot of they got a lot of stuff now that I I'm really amazed. They have so many episodics. I mean, I I was into Succession. And there's so many that are so good now, and everybody has them. Netflix, Hulu, Peacock. Man, we've come full circle on that. Have the you, whole streaming thing. Jeremy, have you heard that uh, Paramount is producing a new show that takes place just before the original series for Star Trek called Strange New Worlds, featuring Captain Pike and Spock? No. So that show just wrapped and it's going to be coming out next year. And the way that it takes place in the timeline, you might be, we might be able to see a young Dimitri Voltaine on the Enterprise as a cadet or 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 maybe even an ensign. It's possible. How cool would that be? It wouldn't be me though. No, no, no they they might they might <laughs> they could for somebody who who looks very much like you. Or they write a story about him in it and his Grandfather he got, appeared. He got aged. <laughs> it's that, uh, what was that episode of Star Trek where they got prematurely aged? The Deadly Years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just do that and just bring you aboard and be like, I'm just supposed to be a cadet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to do a. I'd, I'd love to come back as an alien or something. I mean, I like the idea when they start when they bring people in. Uh, I don't know what it's called when you're uh, you're they're being clever. Or they they connect some show uh, or this was he was in before mm -hmm. to the one that he's in now, or they have some phrase or a line that you know, like uh, Last Man Standing does it with the, the Tool Man Taylor show, Home Improvement. Right, Tim uh, Allen. They'll make a joke about Easter eggs. Haven't I met you before? You know, Easter yeah, eggs. Easter egg. they're, they're they're called Easter eggs. Okay, right. And see, I don't know. Right. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Is now are you are you still are you still on the call? Do you stay in touch with with anyone from any of the shows or movies that that you've been in? Uh, Actually, no, no. I, I twelve years ago I did a lie to me. I think it was the last thing, and then my mother was uh, contemplating it being over. <laughs> hmm. I can laugh now, but uh, so we moved back to Alabama, and I moved near her and my dad, and I got to be with her for five years. The last mm -hmm. five and it was it was it was incredible you know that i got to spend every day with her oh yeah i'm really happy good. For you. and we went through and watched old movies like we did when i was a kid which is probably why i ended up being an actor mm -hmm. because she got me up at 11 or 12 at night for the million dollar movie 
in Hollywood or something to watch old movies, and I love them. So that's so special. That's so great. And then from there, everybody started dying. My dad passed, and we had to move back to LA because my wife's mother passed. And she uh, was sixty-five and completely mm-hmm. great health. I mean, and, and a year or so earlier, Frank Gorshin had died, and and then the pandemic hit when I came back to start working, and that um, gave a year off. And still, I don't go back because, yeah, I don't. I'm not ready. But you do I should. Ready. Yeah, but I have don't to get an it. agent. I have to get a manager. I have to do this. So I started uh, with a, a comic book convention, you know, signing and these things, and started mm-hmm. to see how I can get back. Now you were talking about watching some shows with your uh, with your mom. Then, when I was a kid, my mom and I would watch Golden Girls. I just that was her show. She liked <laughs> it, and I got hooked on it. So yeah, we'd watch the Golden Girls. You know, uh, why not? Now let me ask you this. So it's, it seems like you got on Facebook fairly recently when I uh, messaged you about coming on and, and doing this. Is it, is this like now the resurgence of Jeremy Roberts? Because I would imagine that now suddenly you, you're doing multiple, multiple podcasts, probably interviews. I mean, what's been your experience since you put yourself back out there is, Hey, here's, here's me. And I'm, you know, doing a, fan club or fan page or whatnot. Well, I, I, I was just nervous in that I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't think like I did with watching myself that anybody would care. Why we would talk to him? I mean, I, the parts weren't pivotal, but you know, let's see if I'm going to go back and, and I've got an agent that says I can get you. I've got things signed signings coming up uh, as soon as they open it up, maybe. And uh, I thought, well, all right, let's try this. And then, I, and then all of a sudden, I'm doing this, and it's just amazing the amount of the people that are so the fans, or I don't want to call them fans, because it's the Star Trek fan itself, mm-hmm. it's like amazing. And I just uh, I, beyond humbled that it's that it's been such a not a fervor, but I mean, you know, you don't do like just, uh, these things. I've never been asked. And all of a sudden you are, and you, you, you think, well, maybe you know, I'm not star of anything, but you know, maybe I have a story or so. I, I don't know what to, what, 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 I don't see that it's going to produce me into anything in the future. I well, mean, uh, be nice if like discovery, a casting agent saw one of these and went, you know, that would be funny. Let's put yeah. him in as an alien and blah, blah, blah. Next, you know, I got, I'm working and it's back to work again. I know that once I get an agent and I, I, I audition, unless I've forgotten how, Act. <laughs> I even remembered it to begin with. You will fall will right back job. into getting roles. Just, I will just trust go you. right back into your you got uh, the energy for Pavarotti. It. Go into your Pavarotti. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd but, love. I'd love to see you go tete a tete with Robert Picardo in in some kind of singing thing because um, uh, you know he was doing opera on Voyager. Wow, uh, so that would he's be great on his podcast as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so th- this is. And Star Trek fans are really a, a special breed because Star Trek fans are going to know those characters that might have been minor characters that, especially if you reprise the role, I'm sure you had to be amazed by the number of people that knew exactly what you were in. Oh, yes, you were in this movie, Star Trek movie, and then you know this part, and then you were also on uh, the Hercules or to this, to that. I, I'm sure that had to be probably more than what you were expecting. Uh, I can only imagine that once you opened up Facebook, that it just went sh- straight up in regards to. Well, my wife was, <laughs> my wife was really uh, more shocked. I mean, I was shocked too, but it was, uh, it was that, that people weren't just, oh, the Star Trek, the Voyager, oh, you did Deep Space Nine. It was then all of a sudden it was coming up. You know, I looked at IMDb and, and you've been in everything I grew up watching, or you were in the, oh, my favorite this or that, 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 that. And all of a sudden, that was what it was talked about. And that's yeah. what made me feel a lot, not, you know, I can't, the feeling of being in a Star Trek, there's nothing like it in the world. It's never going to be anything like it, but mm-hmm. that they would actually remember anything else it was just heartwarming. And it felt good for an old man. And, and I'm willing to bet that a lot of these people looking through your IMDb went back to all these movies that they had seen didn't realize you were in and now trying to spot you in that. 
you oh, know, yeah, and they'll you know say something on the on the uh, on the Facebook thing. They'll mention, "I saw you," and or "You're on this right now." As they're they're typing in something about whatever, and, and they'll mention that, "Oh, you're on Malcolm in the Middle," or da, 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 or some other. It's uh, it feels really good. You know what I think everyone who's listening is doing right now because I know I'm doing it. I'm I'm going to go ahead and go in here and IMDb and just do the same thing. Like like look at what are all these things that you had been in that we we had seen and didn't even realize. Oh, dude. dude, this is. Are you way prolific. ahead of me on that, Dag? Jeremy, That's how you, I started. You're this prolific. Whole thing. People under you're, the stairs. Oh, Jer- Jeremy, I you love were, that. People under the stairs. You were pretty much in everything that I watched on television between 1985 and 19 like 99 so yeah. some examples of that right you were on days of our lives you were in yeah. x files you were on monk you were on veronica mars which yeah i just saw monk veronica right? mars like, right dragnet csi the original csi csi miami like Dude. you've been in a ton of stuff Dude, invisible take, man take it back further like santa barbara i remember my mom, about, you know <laughs> things i might have known my mom needed me to program the vcr to make sure that we recorded santa barbara every day <laughs> 21 jump street with johnny depp wow the practice you uh, know. charmed touched by an alien wait a minute you're an episode of sliders yeah sliders. Slide. i'll be yeah. damn jerry o'connell is on lower decks now yep right yeah and of course john Rhys davies did uh a stint on voyager as well as um Leonardo da vinci thank mm-hmm. you he was in wing wasn't he mm-hmm. reese davies in wing commander or yeah, he was uh, also in Commander as well. Yeah, he in was. The, in the fourth one and the third one. A lot Malcolm of cool. McDowell that I got to meet there. Oh, A lot of voices. Yeah, Malcolm During McDowell. During Clockwork Orange, I mean, I couldn't believe I was going to... Um, this is just too much. Did you oh, actually made get a to TV meet him s- on set? Yeah. yeah. That's so only cool. The and uh, Ginger Allen. Ginger Lynn Allen. She was a huge mm-hmm. porno actress in the... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm nodding my head. I know the name, and now I'm ashamed... To, to be doing that, you could have led with that. Actually, helped her move from, from, from that. She got me to help her move. Oh, you really? Roseanne. Let's not forget that Roseanne oh, was big Roseanne. at the time. The Wonder yeah. Years, Seinfeld. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, yeah, prolific is the best word, Dag. For sure, that's the best yeah, word for absolutely. you to describe this. Yeah, you're everywhere. We grew up with you. Everybody who's watching or listening to the show right now, there's at least one show that, of something in your life that you have watched that Jeremy Roberts has done. Yes. Yes, there is. If, if you live through, you didn't live through the eighties or nineties, if, and, uh, and not having seen something, something, something that Jeremy was in. Like, Let me just say if you're but, 12, you might have not knowing it, but not knowing it until now. Uh, Freddie's you, nightmares. Like I said, you'd have passed by me and, and gone, do I? Yep. And that's how it's always, that's just fine by me. I mean, it's okay, but, but it's like, do you guys yeah, remember that one? <coughs> You've been Freddy's, in everything. Freddy's Nightmares. Yeah, it was like a, a an archive show. I, I think so. Show, yeah. Little, little, like, oh, and I got I was to twelve when Robert was England also from that. Yeah, I saw some pictures with with you and and Robert England. Dude, I just saw Robert was, England oh. in Night Rider. You remember that show? Oh man. Oh, yeah. Yep. I got to play his pinball machine in his house. Took it to his game room and he uh, we played his his you know Freddy, nightmare. No, yeah, that's so great. <laughs> Tell me he's got the razor <laughs> glove somewhere that. in his house. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He has like four or five. In a little glass. Under. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. That's have you great. made it off the set with any souvenirs from anything that that you've done? And so tell me something. Yeah, tell me mm-hmm. this. Is that so many stories I've heard about the uh, actors coming away with stuff? It's almost sounds like. You're not supposed to do that. It's frowned mm-hmm. upon. You basically have to steal it and, and get out of there. Is it really that strict about letting you take something back, like your com badge you wore on the show or the uniform or any prop? Do they? I don't know now. I, I don't know about now, but uh, then it was. You know, there, we had whatever entrance, entrances entrances there were, double doors or under the light, the bell that rings when you're shooting. They had guards outside and they had uh, guards inside that were part of the wardrobe. They had them on a rack. Everybody had the tunic Mm -hmm. and uh, the prop master would have whatever you have to give back to them. If you had anything in your hand. Yeah. 
And no, they were, I, I, I hate to say I did my best. I tried to think of every way I could get one of those jackets. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's bold. Cause that's hard to, to hide. You could probably get out there with a phaser or something, but no, you know, you notice the thing that I carry in it's uh, yeah, the pad a <laughs> modern iPad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Old ancient one. Yeah. I, uh, I did take it to the bathroom and slip it under the stall and come back later. And, uh, they never said a thing. Oh, so, so you I made off of that one. Nice, yeah. nice. Do you have it there uh, close by you? No, that's the shameful thing. There was a period I needed to sell it. Oh, right man. And well, it, it you got know. got me a good enough money to take care of my that's family. Like, so. I, I bet it did. Yeah, and that's yeah. the other thing is props. I feel bad now about it. But it's like all those pictures I'd get. I'd get an 8 by 10 up for everybody that's in the show, and I'd get pictures signed so that I would have something, some memory. Yeah. And then on, I just, I, I, you end up getting rid of them, a lot of them. But uh, it ended up being that most of them were signed to me because I didn't want a signed photo by them, just by them. I right. wanted it to say to Jeremy, say something. Yeah. That's what, that's what made it worthless. <laughs> so that was worthless because it had my name on it. So Which sentimental, because but I have worthless. Hmm? Sentimental, but worthless. Oh, they mean a lot to me now. I mean, like back here is nothing. I, mean, I could just take me down the hall and it'd be hundreds. I love it. It's like uh, well, you yeah, had that, a dream. Oh, that dream. Remember that dream I mentioned? You were right. Yeah, about? I was I was waiting for a moment to, to bring that up. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about that? When I was a child, teens, I had a reoccurring dream. It was always the same. I was arriving in a home that was obviously Victorian, you know, the full house look that and I right. was arriving in this Victorian home. I had bags in my hand. I walked up the stairs. I go down and I look left and right. There's somebody in that room and somebody says, that's your room. And I go forward and I put my bags down in the middle of this carpeted room. And I I've got this feeling of amazing happiness. I don't know why. <clears throat> and that was a dream. And I've had it all the time. I haven't had any since, but uh, I got I got into ACT, American Conservatory Theater. I auditioned. Uh, there were 2,000 people auditioning uh, all over the country. And I auditioned on uh, eight, um, St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky, I thought. And the guy in there, who now works a lot, he was the guy at the thing signing in people. There was nobody there. It was in the Franklin uh, Roosevelt Hotel. And he, he, he signs me in. He says, oh, you know, they're, they're going to remember you. I said, why? Well, you're the last one, you know, good or bad. <laughs> like, what, 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 what are you doing? You're, I'm, I'm scared out of my mind. I want to get into the school so bad. Two weeks later, I get a letter on April Fool's Day, which I think, oh, man, this is not, this is karma or funny. And it says I got in. And I, uh, I couldn't, I freaked out. It was up in San Francisco, and I, I had to. I got up there and looked at this board that had names on it in the school about other people that need a roommate. And I went to this address and I walked up the stairs and I looked left and right. And that was the dream. My dream was a duplicate. I mean, it was a photo of copy. That's wow. Great. What I was going through right then and the happiness I sat down in the middle and felt I'm getting chills now because it's one of those things in life I can I'll have no explanation for. I don't oh, yeah. know if there's a God or not or what. I don't know. But It's the Midas touch. How the hell would I have known that? 30 years, well, 15 or, or so years after I had the dreams. If you started your own religion, what would you call it? Because that's, <laughs> that's where you're at now. That's what you ought to do. Premonition is great. <laughs> Yeah, it would be like you saw the light, you know, you died and you saw white light, talk to Jesus or whatever it is after. It yeah. Kind of that. Uh, wow. That's a I really cool experience. A God have, or not, That's way cool. How could I possibly, I mean, now this is not bullshit. It's just the weirdest. No. I wish somebody could say there isn't an answer. See, this is what you couldn't have lived to... that already. Here's sci-fi. That's the only place it could happen. Right. You didn't get to complete this story on your last interview. So no, I'm really true. glad that you were able to uh, to bring that back up. It's almost like deja vu, which, which freaks me out every time it happens. It's, it's just day. the strangest thing. Are we are we going through? What'd you say? I said, I said deja day. vu. But oh, uh, 
it, it's like, are we in the matrix or are, are we repeating <laughs> this, this lifetime? How, you know, why does that happen? So that, that's the thing I do is in my, if I mean, I'm driving and I have too much time to think, I think about stuff into, like, if we want to talk about like quantum energy states and how they like, they no, oscillate. because we can talk wobbly, about wobbly, that, timey, but, wimey. what, what's, yeah. With what's left of our listeners now, <laughs> I, we don't. Hi, <laughs> uh, we're four guys with a beard. What do you want to do? <laughs> hey, you know this. This happened. I had. A, I was on a set of something. A Treat Williams. I'm naming these names like this. I'm dropping names. Treat Williams, Barry Corbin, and I'm doing a cop in it. Actually, a nice cop. Mm-hmm. And I haven't explained things and I am having heart pains. And I end up having a heart attack and I, they take me, they finished the scene though. Hmm? I finished the scene while I was having a heart attack. Because you're not going to cut me out of this again. Wow. They came, they gurneyed me up and it was a day or so before Thanksgiving, 20 years ago to the day coming up in November. And I had a quadruple bypass. Three days later, this occurred. Absolutely white. Really? Stress can certainly Boom. cause that. Wow, sure. that fast, huh? Yeah. Boom. I mean, it was just, well, I mean, you know, it started uh, instantly. Everything came out from then was gray. Hmm. Well, I've got, I've definitely got more gray now than I did when we started this podcast a couple of years ago. So you can look at a progression picture of me. Like, yeah, these guys are aging, Big J. Hair <laughs> fell out, you know, all, all that. No, that's not, I, I walked in already. No so you hair. were what, 46 at the heart attack? That still seems pretty young. Yeah, but uh, I had uh, uh, still had an Alabama upbringing, bacon, biscuits, everything oh. bad for you. It was delicious, but I, uh, and then my dad became, was a chef. So, and I watched Food Network, like you wouldn't believe I love food. You know Cooking what I'm going to, when we're done with this, I'm going to make some mozzarella sticks. Like <laughs> that has nothing to do with bacon or anything else. But now suddenly I just want a snack. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And it's, it's after midnight. I'm like a gremlin. You don't want to feed me after midnight, but I, I can't help it. Sometimes, you know, it's, I'm stress eating. I don't know why. Maybe because of work. Dag, you believe it, right? I'm just looking for an excuse. You Jay, know, just to, I'm gonna validate you to make your mozzarella sticks. On your thank terms. you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, when it comes so to aging, you can speak for yourself because I plan to live forever. <laughs> Do you guys remember uh, Saturday Night good, Live? Good skit? Quote. What Saturday remember, Night Live's what? Uh, a Saturday Night Live skit. A couple of women were on their a radio show, and they brought on I think Alec Baldwin, and they talked kind of like this all the time. You, you know, no, I think I remember the Baldwin. characters. But... <laughs> they just talked in this monot, and I thought we were getting there because everybody's talking so nicely to everybody. And that was that in that scene that they, yeah. these two women talk <laughs> so talk to you what are you doing today oh i'm making i'm making my sweaty balls because he makes these little yes balls. <laughs> yeah that's sweaty balls yeah, that's a classic <laughs> it's hilarious i thought maybe balls. we're getting into it <laughs> yes i think it's time you make your mozzarella sticks check oh my i'm gonna watch that that skit too yes yes <laughs> well i you love that one <laughs> great now i'm gonna be thinking about sweaty balls when i'm eating mozzarella sticks oh i forgot and he he punched me in the face in marrying man, Alec Baldwin. Uh, see, are you I kidding? Can connect to everyone. Good God! Wow! Wow! <laughs> oh, and I got to come on in a sleazy way to Kim Basinger. That was another kind of scary. Oh, sweaty moment. let's hear oh, this I one. We got to hear this one. Oh, I was I was in the marrying man, and I played Bugsy Siegel's right hand buffoon, and my and the other right hand buffoon is a guy named uh, Big John Stud. Mm-hmm. Famous wrestler. My mom knew him like that. You know, she of course believed everything in wrestling was real. <laughs> but you know, he's like six foot nine. I mean, anyway, we had a we had a fake fight, and he, he got too close once in a swing and, and took a chip out of my tooth. Front. Ooh. Of course, now I'm missing a lot of them because we had an accident a year ago, five years ago. That's another story. But uh, yeah, he, he chipped it nice enough, guy and all. But he had he left and went to Malibu and, and was worried about how it was going to be handled. And oh, and I'm just you know. Mm-hmm part of the job it was you just leaned into it alec that's all but anyway i had to come on to her in a scene we go to the, one of these 40s bungalows and i'm driving her home and we come up to the door it's lit it's it's very romantic and everything <laughs> <laughs> and i'm looking at this face that just you know kim basinger that many years ago she's just oh 
some some women and you just look at them and you yep you can't see right she just glowed magnificent beauty and and i had to come on to her and <laughs> i kept breaking and that must have been a hard scene <laughs> consoling me and all and you know your mind goes wild god what if i ask her out <laughs> yeah like that was gonna happen well what, I mean, what kind of pressure kim, is it <laughs> kim was moving in with alec baldwin during that film so it might have been bad yeah i found the perfect picture of that too hey, hey brad pitt in the marrying man he, he told me before he asked alec, uh, uh, jennifer aniston to marry him so hey yeah. wow who do you think it happened no i, I mean how, how did you find yourself in a position where you had to hit on Kim Basinger on screen. You're probably thinking, how did I end up here? Yeah, that's, lucky. that's that's what kind of thing I don't like I say, I don't do these. They're, they're very big, not very big, but they're in things that just something like, I don't know, like you, I just get to the, the, the mask or you get to be in another yeah. Disney that's going to run forever uh, vacation <laughs> series. Uh, they're just. Uh, and you know, what's lucky, funny lucky. is. There, there are these small roles, but it sounds like so many of them were high pressure. Like I, I'm in this film for two minutes, but I have to hit on Kim Basinger, or I'm in this movie for like a couple minutes. I've got to be next to George Takai. I, I'm in this movie for a hot second, and here's Jim Carrey. It's like it's just high pressure. You know, you're you're not a background guy. You have to interact with the star all the time. That must be. Well, and I don't you're know. not, and you're not just. Uh, it's just that you've got this. My God, I got the part. Yeah, that that alone yeah. is just like, I, yeah. how, and how can I live up to whatever it is? Oh, I'm, oh, oh, God, I got to come on to who? Oh, <laughs> how, am I going to look sleazy enough? Do I want to? I, yeah, you don't. Yeah, you you're as good enough. You're worthy of being in it. I'm not worthy. You, know? you get the part. You get the script. And like, oh shit! Arnold Schwarzenegger has to put me in a headlock. Why am I? You know, it's things like that. That would be okay. Okay, have you done any movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? And if you say yes, I'm just like, yep, we're done. This is good. He's been in everything. We can close up shop. I didn't see one. No, no. Yeah, I didn't but, see any. No, but let's see. I, I think that there's something that will come up once we're off. Yep. But uh, my best friend, Gregory Cummings, Cummins, he's, uh, he's uh, Creighton Barrel in Bosch. He's one of those two characters. They're cops in a series on Netflix, I think, called Bosch. He did cliffhanger with Arnold, so I get to hear nonsense oh, from him and about it? him and Arnold all the time. You know, when, he, when like I've done something, or we have this thing where we get on each other's nerves. <laughs> well, it, well cliffhanger joke. was Sylvester Stallone. Oh, um, I'm sorry, that's right. You're right. No, that's still I get them. I get them mixed up. Those two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Easy What's to his do. name? Yeah, Stallone. Oh, him. It's Gregory Cummins. I, I linked it in the Discord. He was okay. also in, we met and uh, we did Lone Justice. It was a Western, uh, oh, well, that had everybody in it. Oh, you know, Deep Space Nine. I noticed when I was in it, I, and after that, it put every guest actor in Hollywood in their show. I think that was something they were trying to do. That's actually something Star Trek's always been fantastic at, right? Like they hide really? people in tons of makeup and stick them in an episode kind of thing. Yep. You know, that's the one I wanted to talk to you about most because Deep Space Nine is my favorite of the Star Treks. And I wanted to talk about like how that whole arrangement got to be. Did your agent just call you and be like, all right, all right, Jeremy, I booked you for uh, for uh, for Deep Star Nine and uh, <laughs> you, you have to show up on a Wednesday. <laughs> and it's 11 hours of makeup before you're on set. Right. right. Because, yeah, well, that was just pretty normal, though. Right? For me, I did. I mean, after the first time you're encased in plastic with only a nose to breathe out of yeah yeah kind of get used to it what was that whole experience like though like the the makeup and then on the set where it's like a jungle the whole time well you have you known anything i might have mentioned this before so i might repeat myself but it was a it was great up until i i got ill Mm -hmm. which i hate to admit but uh it was in the 90s and it was the set everything was hot as ever no matter what and you were in all this four hours of makeup right and, right and we'd done a few things and i was not feeling particularly well but as usual you're not going to say a thing you know right. i'll die in this right i get to get my lines out 
<laughs> heart attack in it. You're you're damn committed. So <laughs> that was if I need thing. to die to keep this job. And that was another thing I, I, I learned that, that I was told by other producers that you just you uh, you're on you're you're never late, and you try to get it in one. That's what he, they told me is the best thing to learn, and that's TV. Yeah, you know, gotcha. Because they're under a budget, and you've got to sit there doing it over and over, and it's just right. They're like, so I, I think I got to get this in one or two, and I, you know, blah blah blah. But so now you got the pressure of of getting it right like the first couple times. Yeah, and then wow. the, then to be called back was nice to get. I had a lot of repeat casting, which made me feel like okay, I'm doing something right because now they're going to put me or try to put me in this next show. And even after I stopped 12 years ago, I got like NYPD Blue. I never got in that. They kept trying to call me shows like that because they would make a joke after the second guest star that I hadn't got. We got a pot in the back for you here. We're going to get you something, you know, on your third try, you're trying to get some murder on it or some show. So you you got to a point, it sounds like, where you just started turning down these these roles or just? Well, no, this was after I sort of retired and gone back home and all i kept getting or when are you coming back or casting uh, and i just well i'm not you know but thank you and, and you know then it whittled off and then you know nobody cares now so <laughs> go back and, and remind so that, them. Epi- that episode was directed by the late renee bergenois right right right, right. any oh, that was, was he I as a director i'm oh, sorry I hadn't finished. I was got oh, sick, and then I, I think on the second that. or third day, it wasn't my fault. Like I told you earlier, I can just go be gone and have to be brought back. What are we talking about? And I got ill, and that we were on there, and uh, I can't remember what we were shooting at the time. But I was in full makeup, and I had an, a, a stand-in. We also, had to go through the five hours, also in case or whatever, to come in for lighting. And, mm-hmm. and I had to tell the makeup and all that I'm really not doing well. I'm, I've been throwing up this morning, and I've been up all night and. So they, they placed a zipper in the back so that if there was ever a chance, it was zip, and I'm off, and then I could uh, yeah, regurgitate. Oh, geez. Which, yeah. which happened. And I, I, I had to, and they came over, and <laughs> it was off <laughs> to the bucket. And uh, then, of course, insurance steps in and says, we can't put him back in that. He's sick. Lawsuits, oh, man. blah, blah. And I was like, no. Mm-hmm. I, so I didn't know where I was going to end up. On the because I knew I had said things, but they turned to the guy on the right. I, I wish I knew him now. If he's out there and he's listening, who are you? He got it, he got his SAG card and he started acting as an actor. I think he might have even continued on. Really? <laughs> okay, could have even been Tim Rice. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, so not only are you in these shows and movies that help jumpstart others' careers, but you were on a set, <laughs> threw up. And still help someone get their career. I, and that's that's amazing. You know, so you can't go wrong. Even near death, and I'm still handing it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you that guy will never forget that moment, though. Like you will go down in his history, the stories that he tells his kids as the guy who got me my first gig, essentially. Right. <laughs> he does. If he didn't work again, he's telling his friends and his children, like you say. But I, I watched it recently because I hadn't. I, I wouldn't watch it. You know, I watch it if I'm in a I'm in a, a makeup. I will watch it, but somehow I didn't get into that one because I didn't think which where was I going to be. So I saw it recently, and I, I still I'm not sure because I swear I hear my voice because I noticed that most of the the Jem Je- Hadar were doing hey, something down here. Yeah, they were all talking like they had to, and I just uh, my voice came out as it was, and I think I'm saying something. I pick up an object, and I think that's me saying, "What's this?" And it sounds like me my delivery but next thing you know it goes off and this guy gets shot and, and the gem guard they go through this they think they should die for their cause like i, I forgot what yep. it was but yeah and he's down there giving this speech and i see his arm and i, I realize he's he's, uh, he's a black guy he's an african-american that was the guy next to me the stand-in so i'm thinking i see this and i go that's him i think that's him he's got the lines that i think were mine but i don't remember so i know i might be in it but so I here's come up in the front. My name is right up there at the beginning. Where am I? Because everybody looks the same. Sorry. Yeah. You know, so here's <laughs> here's this guy's story. So okay, he's going to be asked, "How did you get your start in Hollywood?" Like, well, I was on the set of DS9 as a stand-in, and Jeremy Roberts threw up in this bucket, <laughs> and 
and then I got more lines. And so you, you guys are going to have to help me out. Which episode of DS9 was this? Hippocratic, Hippocratic Oath. Oath. Yeah, Hippocratic Oath. Got to give me a little bit more. Uh, what so what happened? O'Brien, in... O'Brien and Bashir crash land on a planet where the Jem'Hadar are trying to wean themselves. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And that's okay. white. Uh, to... yep. Catch, Catch yourself white. white. Something. Yeah. White. yeah. Yeah, it was a, a a place where the addicts were were going to try to get clean. And okay, yep, I, I got it now. Th- thank you, thank you. It's, see, just a little rusty, but give, give me give me a little bit more of the carrot, and I'll bring the stick. Was that Michael Bailu? The name Mike, of the Michael Bailu. Is that Bailu? someone? Oh, he was another Jem'Hadar in that uh, in that episode. I only know Marshall. Marshall, uh, he, Marshall he, T. Yeah. I think he played the main one because he was like uh, uh, he was not he was like five foot eight or so. Scott McDonald shorter. played the main one. Really? Right. right. Yeah. Who Scott played McDonald's. the one at the end who was kind of going on our on the good side and was against their leader? Uh, oh. Maybe I'll have to look at it again. That was Stephen uh, Davies. Just watch all the the Jem Hadar stuff. All because I wonder if he got credit then. <laughs> Probably did. Well, and if he did, he owes it to you some way or another. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so here's here's what I want to do. I want to like fly out, meet Jeremy Roberts, have him like touch my shoulder, and then I'll be in movies and and shows. And <laughs> just, like you know, suddenly I've I've got this I've got this career, and it was thanks to you know, Midas here, Jeremy Roberts. Right. And if nothing else, you can uh, say that you're two degrees separate from everybody then. Right. Now, now I'm three degrees from <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Three. three. Uh, yes. Yeah. Two. Cause I, I met Jeremy Roberts and then he knows everybody. <laughs> but they're not calling. That's the problem. <laughs> right. Jeremy, I wanted to compliment that shirt. I love it. Oh yeah. This is my, uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Everywhere. What's your poison? Right. What's your poison? <laughs> Uh, well, dirty martinis, usually. All right, on. When, but I like uh, these new things. You see these new things that are in beer, like a picante flavored in a michelada or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer, beer with a yeah, I'm kind of getting into those. Those are pretty tasty. <laughs> we uh, we interviewed John Billingsley back in December, and he's a big Sazerac guy. So it's kind of a question I like to ask because I got this handy dandy. Star Trek cocktail book. No way. Oh. Where'd you get that? Wow. Uh, the same place you get everything, Jay. Amazon. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid Actually, question. It, it was a Christmas gift, but I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. Yeah. I had somebody recently, a lady on a, on a, a podcast, ask him because they're doing some kind of food and wine event about Star Trek. Like, so if I had thinking, I could say, you know, I said I cook a lot and I watch Food Network and I'm always recreating foods because I mm. love eating. She said, if you can come up with anything you know, related to Star Trek, you know. Maybe you could use it, one of these. Yeah, that would be cheating. No way. <laughs> Star Trek <laughs> right. book. You had mentioned on a previous show that uh, something about cooking and they were talking about those books. And I was like, I have those books. So I'm I'm going to show off. Oh, like, and I've got, I always show this. Yeah. Because the minute I got on it, hey. I had to get this. Because it's like, isn't it like Bible then of Star Trek? Yep. Yep. It's, if you're mentioned, you're in here. And I'm, uh, I'm, I can't believe I'm in this. This is amazing. That was I, I, that I, was written by. Hold, hold that up ago. again, real quick. That's Bio Trimble, dude. Y- yeah, who's more or less credited for saving, saving Star Trek, uh, yeah. along with uh, 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 Lucy. Um, oh Lucy my God! Lucy yeah, Ball. right. Lu- Lucille Ball. Who yeah. So. The, uh... Who gave the uh, the original series a second pilot green light? Yep, back when they were Desi Lou. Yep. Oh, Lucille. See, I got nothing. I got no degrees from her. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I did. I I was at a party once for Rudy Valley. Now we're really going back. Get out of okay. here. And I was uh, I was I worked on the the ninth hole golf course. I was also a lifeguard before I was an actor. I got out of the Marine Corps after Vietnam. Bob, I don't know what I'm going to do. My dad was a chef at uh, the Lakeside Golf Club in Hollywood. Well, uh, and it's about a block or two from Warner Brothers. 
Mm -hmm. So all the stars go into this restaurant, the smokehouse there, and then they either play at the Lakeside Golf Club. And my dad got me a job in the summer. I would be a, a, a lifeguard. And I got to meet Magnum P.I. then. He was just he was just beginning. And that was another oh, thing. Anyway, Selig. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. He walked into the pool and he takes these four steps on a Sunday on Easter. And he walks down and the, the sun behind him was working a Jesus thing on him. <laughs> it's amazing. I even said, that is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. I mean, I might hear anything cares, but it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah. amazing. I said, He's going to be somebody. He's, he, that guy's going places. But anyway, they put me on the ninth hole and you're a golf ball. Or you're a, a bartender out there. So you're just making these drinks for these players and people. And that's when I got to meet all the people that I saw when my mother would wake me up and watch the midnight movie with all these stars you yeah. have in Crosby and John Wayne and his buddies and every old actor star and I was just I'm getting to serve drinks to these guys you're and getting connected Bob Hope it was just a, a bevy of I mean you could say Abbott and Costello the amount of people that came through there I was just amazed and I still wasn't going to be an actor but I got to meet him there. There was some degrees of separation before I even knew what it was. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah uh, do you have? Uh, sorry, Renzo. No, I was just saying it's definitely one degree of separation from Lucy, from, from Lucy for sure. So you've got it. Do you have your little uh, uh, Dimitri Valtain um, Funko pop. pop or whatever that is? Pop the vinyl. Uh, oh no, the the character, yeah. little the bobblehead, well, the it's, character. It's a pop vinyl. Oh right, right. Somebody there somebody modified a Funko Pop for him. Yeah, somebody made one of these for me. It was, uh, Look at that. Awesome. that! I used to have that cool. curl up there. Oh yeah, and he's even yeah. he's even correct in his uh, lieutenantship. So, yep, so, yeah, I that, that was is amazing. Attention to detail, right there. That's great. And some people showed me that you've got a action figure, and I said, "Well, okay, we got to get that," you know, because you gotta you make an action figure about you. You gotta have. Now, I think that would probably be. The, the pinnacle is getting an action figure of yourself. Once you're an action figure, I, I think that's that's when you've really made it, right? I mean, I don't have an action figure of me. That would be <laughs> kind of cool. But. I saw somebody. There's somebody online that showed me <laughs> something. He sells them, and they were, I, I can't tell what size, but it's kind of like this oversized head. And he sculpts it, and it looks just like you. Oh, you know, I was thinking I could pull up one of the photos from Star Trek, or maybe I just turn like I do in the 90 degrees ports or whatever I say that. Right. And have them do that for me. You know, leave it to the grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure. your grandpa. He's a murderer on most things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I killed a lot of people. <laughs> oh, my daughter. And I got paid for it. My right. Daughter, yeah. She was uh, 13, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Whenever Herbie Fully Loaded came out, so it was the first time she got to go on the set of anything because she'd say, What do you, when I'm on something today, uh, LA Law, I don't know. And, and what do you, can I go on the set today? Please, please, please. I have to see so and so. Or, and I go, Well, I'm shooting somebody or I'm robbing a bank. No, not today. <laughs> or, I, or I'm cutting I off mean... a tattoo on Freddy's Nightmare. It was one of these, she didn't go on anything. <laughs> Couldn't go on anything until Kirby, and then she got to meet, you know, Lindsay Lohan, and Lindsay Lohan shut that show down for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> she, she did. I got such looks that day because I wasn't uh -oh. working. And I brought my daughter, and she had a skateboard. She said, "Bring her on, bring her skateboard." So there's Lindsay Lohan going off while fifty people are sitting around. You're know, like, you know, this is a fifty million dollar photo <laughs> film where <laughs> and she just Jeremy. stopped. She, she just stopped and went and hung out with your daughter. Oh, she did. Just right. Thanks, her Jeremy. And everybody watching, and, and I, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> "What do you want nice. me to do?" That's pretty cool. But, and that I was oh, I loved that one because that was the first time I actually got to be uh, funny. Well, that's funny. The first thing I ever did was that Hooperman robbery, and I had a joke in that. You know, Dumper said something to him, and I don't think I got to be funny again until Herbie. <laughs> years and and then you got to shut down a Hollywood production. So. <laughs> <laughs> Your but bucket list must be this long and has everything checked off of it. What was that? I got to act with a Volkswagen. So. Oh. A Vulcan and a Volkswagen. Yeah. Done. Okay. In Vietnam. Keep Such a coming. range. Such a range. <laughs> <laughs> I never got on, uh, oh, what was that? Vietnam. Mash. Oh, 
no, no, no. Oh, it was a serious uh, beach. Was it something beach? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, a friend of mine's on it, was on it. Oh, the crazy crap. guy. What is that one? Bush. I'm going to have to look it up. And I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's a lot of them I wanted to get on. I always, I never felt I got on as many as that, I uh, wanted. China to get on. Beach? China, China Beach. China Beach. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. That was about Vietnam? Yes. No, it wasn't around then. It was about it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I, I just think it's odd that. It wasn't a comedy, though. No. <laughs> yeah. Robert Ricardo's on it, though. To fuck you, understand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now that song's in my head and it's going to be in You're there welcome. like hey, the rest of night. jeremy started it with the pavarotti i just checked it out <laughs> well so later while i'm eating my mozzarella sticks i'm going to have that song in my head good good <laughs> hey jeremy i really want to thank you for being with us tonight this has been a blast um yes. you are a joy truly well, a joy. thank you it's been a pleasure i had a great time I love i'm, I'm glad you did Oh, yeah, great, great stories. And thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And thank you very much for responding back to me and taking the messages and, and doing this. That that was great. Um, because, yeah, that, that's kind of the, you know, it's, oh, boy, you know, I'm going to have to message this, this star, this actor. He's probably going to be like, who the hell are you? You want me on your podcast kind of thing. So appreciate it. Oh, Renzo got the dog. Oh. Uh. There's a doggy. <laughs> so, so if much. I get on another Star Trek or something, I'll, I'll call you back and say, guess what I did on this one? Please do. Yes. Yeah, yes. so we can watch it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We'll plug you out. <laughs> I'm getting a jacket next time, though. Yeah, like this one. Yeah, yeah. Walk out of there with, uh, with some uniform. <laughs> nice, nice. Jeremy, what I, were you going to say? I can't remember now. See, it's been seconds. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, because I have a problem with that, because when I was in Hercules, uh, I was doing that big devil one, uh, red face, and my two-year-old daughter was there. And uh, God, I lost it. What was this about again? (laughs) I did the same thing. I walked into the room. Why am I here? (laughs) Something to do with that being, what was that about? So it started again. Uh, You said your wife controls you. Oh, I'm doing this Hercules episode, and she I can't get an audition with Lord of the Rings. I couldn't get one. My agents have called me. They said, you can't oh. do it. I'm in New Zealand shooting this, and he's in Wellington. You know, Jackson, right. I, I can somehow. You've got to be able. Couldn't do it. My wife says she's going to try. And <laughs> you're, you're an ice skater. <laughs> Not that that doesn't mean you can't, you know, manipulate people. <laughs> but we got on the phone and she talked to this and that got to the assistant and said, uh, Jeremy Roberts is up in, in uh, Auckland shooting Hercules and he was trying to get an audition. She would, Oh, next thing you know, I got a flight down and I'm reading for Jackson. But you know, the bummer of this was, was the, wow. I was reading for Vigo Mortensen's part who ended up getting it. So it was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, Aragorn. Okay. I mean, but I'm not going to get that. There's no way I'm going to get that part. You, no. you probably didn't want that. You're like you're walking in. No, I don't want. To I'm an that. orc. I'm something <laughs> some weird a character. Make me yeah, a I hobbit didn't get it. or an orc. Didn't get a thing on it. All right. Well, guys, I'm fiending for these mozzarella sticks. <laughs> I, I don't know about right. you, but yeah. Now I'm going to have to eat something. All right. And listen to some Pavarotti while you do it. We are Beyond Trek Podcast. Lower your inhibitions and surrender your years. We will add inspirational and hilarious Trek content to your day. Your attention will adapt to subscribe to us. Resistance is futile.